Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 21, he sends blessings of good things to meet us every day. He sends blessings of good things to meet us. What a good God we have. Aren't you excited to meet him? See him face to face, I should say. Do you know we are close? We are close to seeing Jesus face to face. The one who died for us. The one who paid a price that we could not pay. I feel like I'm kind of in a well. Do y'all, do I feel like, do y'all hear that? It's a little wellish. Seeing Jesus face to face. Hallelujah. Uh, all right, we're going to get into the word and um, we're going to go, yeah, I don't know, maybe kind of fast. We'll, we'll, just, uh, we'll just see. But, but tonight is teaching, and that's what we do. We teach the Word on Wednesday night. Amen? Amen. And uh, we come uh, to be equipped. Is that right? Yes. Uh, we come to be changed. Amen. And it's the Word of God that is received and acted upon that changes us from the inside out. And that's our life's, that is our life's job until we see him face to face is to be transformed more and more every single day into his image. Hallelujah. To bear the image of the one that created us. To bear the image of the one who redeemed us and bought us back. We're twice his. He created us and he paid for us. He bought us back. Amen. Bought with a price. Hallelujah. So we're changed. We're transformed from the inside out. Amen? Amen. Uh, and so let's pray as we get into the word. And uh, I'll just remind us as we're, this is not just for Wednesday nights, but any time that we assemble together, uh, that what the Lord can do and the weightiness of his presence and the weightiness of the anointing uh, and what he can accomplish in us and among us doesn't just depend on what comes from here. Amen. You have a part. Say, I have a part, and that part is to be pulling. That part is to be expecting. That part is to be expecting to hear from God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, so we don't come and we don't sit like a knot on a log and, and expect someone to entertain us and just say, come on, show me what you can do. Amen. Amen. Every time we come, we come in with the purpose of God's got something for me today. I'm going to receive direction. I'm going to receive direction. I'm, did I say that twice? Oh, we're going to receive direction and correction. Amen. I've said this many times. If, if I sit through, uh, through more than one or two services and I have not been corrected by the word that's coming forth, that's a red flag in my life that my heart is hardened somewhere. Because every single time the word comes forth, I should be corrected in some way. Some way to make an adjustment in, in my life. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your word tonight, and we approach it with reverence, and we approach it with honor, and we thank you, Father, that you've given us uh, eyes to see, you've given us ears to hear, and you've given us a heart to understand. So I thank you that revelation knowledge flows tonight. Father, I thank you that by the Spirit of God that you say things uh, to each individual that never comes out of my mouth. Oh, we thank you for it, that you tailor make uh, your word for each of us tonight. I thank you for answers. I thank you for healing, Lord. I thank you that as we sit under the word tonight, uh, that faith can be released, faith will be released, and healing shall come. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you agree with that, say amen. 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 So I want to talk about honor for just a moment. The title of the message uh, tonight is Honoring the Word. And I know it's a message that if you know me, uh, you're pretty familiar that this is a, a stream that I teach in often. Um, honor 
honor for the word. I'm going to try to stay with my notes. Sorry for the sniff. Do you remember last year, if you were here, how many were here in January of 2022? Do you remember that during that time there were some things that were uh, words of the Lord that came to the people of this house that we, that we gave our attention to? And uh, those words were, be, were three things. And actually, the first one, uh, Pastor Nate first uh, mentioned, I believe, in October of the previous year. Uh, but they were three things. How many of you can tell me? Reverence and honor on the rise. We fight to be together and in the know. And how many of you know when the Lord uh, brings a word to a body of people that we're to be given attention to that word? And those words don't expire. God's words don't ever expire. And so this really wasn't going to be part of the message tonight, but <clears throat> about 3.30 in the afternoon, I love when this happens, that uh, the Lord impressed on me to, uh, to talk about this. So we're going to talk about honor, reverence and honor. 1 Samuel 2.30, the last part of, of that passage. And I, and I trust that you, you brought something to take notes with. Amen. Because if we honor the word, then we're expecting to hear something and we're giving our attention to it. And we're not just going to sit and listen to it, but we're going to put it down. So we can go back and look at it. That's part of honoring the word. Amen. And don't look at me like that's the first time y'all have heard that. This has been said from here many, many, many times. 1 Samuel 2.30 says, For them that honor me, what the last part there, For them that honor me, what does God say? I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Now despise just means to think little of, <clears throat> to not value, to not give weight to. Uh, but so, so he says here, for them that honor me, I will honor. What does that tell me in you? That tells you and me that the measure to which I honor the Lord is the exact measure that he can honor me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Brother Hagen uh, made this uh, statement, <clears throat> Brother Kennethy Hagen. He said, when reverence and honor are restored in the church, there will be a restoration and a multiplication of the miraculous power of God. Amen. When reverence and honor are restored in the church, how many of you know that it matters? I'm so sorry. Can you mute me for a second? And y'all just close your ears. Ah, sorry if I have to do that again. Ah. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> See, it just makes you like me all the more, doesn't it? <clears throat> doesn't it, young people, that I can be gross and it's okay, huh? <laughs> all right. Brother Hagen said, When reverence and honor are restored in the church, there will be a restoration and a multiplication of the miraculous power of God. So this tells me and this tells us <clears throat> that it matters in our lives personally and when we gather together the honor of our hearts. The attitude, honor is of the heart, right? And so the attitude of our hearts, how much honor uh, am I giving the Lord? How much honor am I giving his word. And so this can be an oh me or an oh my situation. How much honor am I giving his word? And so we talked about reverence and honor calls for something. Reverence and honor calls for something from heaven. Uh, and it pulls down heaven's flow in our lives. And I'm telling you, we're going to be a disappointed people. We're going to be a disappointed, anemic sort of people if we <clears throat> don't position our hearts in a place of honor for the Lord, for his house, 
for his people, for his word, and for his spirit. Amen. We, we, can't, we can't be lackadaisical. We can't be just okay with just a little dab of do you and then expect God to come. <coughs> I'm sorry. Expect God to come and meet us here with his miraculous power. God shows up in places of honor. Amen. So honor requires humility. Honor requires me bringing myself, my thoughts, my will, my desires under his lordship. Amen. Now we're talking about the main emphasis tonight is the honor of his word and coming up under his word. And this is, I would say, the answer for a lot of us uh, under the sound of my voice where healing is concerned. Healing uh, may not be manifested in our lives because of our lack of honor for his word, for coming up underneath his word, for calling his word final authority. Would you hand me my purse? So we must make a decision where his word is concerned that we are making it final authority in our lives. And this is one thing that I have learned in my walk with the Lord that areas, um, areas where I have honored him, uh, areas where I have honored his word, um, like certain areas of my life, whether it be my children or I'm talking about his word, his word considering uh, uh regarding my family, regarding my children, or whatever. When, when I'm exercising honor for a part of his word, I'm elevated in, in places of honoring his word for different areas of my life. Do you, does that make sense? And so it, it, truly does, um, it truly does matter how we treat his word. Amen. Um, humility, humility is this. Humility is, I don't know it all. Say, I don't know it all. all. Uh, Humility uh, says that there is someone or something greater that I must yield to. And the Bible tells us that it is the humble who receives grace. Is that right? And grace is how we receive everything from God. Everything. Grace, by grace, through faith. By grace, through faith. You were saved by grace, through faith. Amen. And so it is the humble that receives anything from the Lord. So our salvation is the same way. By grace, I mean our healing is the same way. By grace, through faith. But that means I've got to humble myself under a word that is different than mine. Under a word that is different uh, than what I may hear uh, or see or feel in this natural realm. Amen. Amen. Um, Hey, we're going to get there. Honor for the Lord requires that I make his word final authority in my life. Honor says I will make the call and call right and truth. What your word says in every situation in my life. Amen. Amen. Honoring the word of God. I'm sorry for the snotting. Honoring the word of God. I want to kind of go fast here because we got uh, six pages. And I'm on page one. Honoring the word of God. God's word is truth. John 17, 17. Thy word is truth. Don't you want to come under a word that is truth? Where are we going to find truth? God's word. Are we going to find it anywhere else? Then why do we look for it somewhere else? 
Why are we trying to navigate our lives by a lie? If the only truth is God's word, thy word is truth, then we need to be looking for truth in his word. Nobody's opinion, nobody else's experience, not our own experience. Thy word is truth. God's word is eternal. Matthew 24, 35 says, The earth and sky, this is in the Passion Translation, will wear out and fade away before one word I speak loses its power or fails to accomplish its purpose. Glory to God. Talk about a faithful God. Amen. Psalms 119.89 says, Standing firm in the heavens and fastened to eternity is the word of God. Standing firm in the heavens and fastened to eternity is the word of God. Now, you know what? I can't make this decision for you. No one else can make this decision for you. Young people, your parents cannot make this decision for you. It is our individual decision as to whether we are going to say that God's word is final authority in my life. And see, we, we, we're deluding the word of God because we like some of it and we don't like some of it. So, so we want some of it, but we don't want to come under another part of it. And so it hinders our faith. And so it hinders our faith. Amen. God doesn't take his word back or change it up on us. Woo, the faithful God. What a set for tonight. Come on. Stable, dependable. He's not one way one day and another way another day. But you know what? We won't know that unless we get his word on it. <clears throat> Amen. All right. Just a moment. You tickly throat. I resist and rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Stop it. Amen. Psalms 89, 34. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. This is what God says. My covenant will I not break, nor will I alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful? That he's not good one day and in a bad mood another day. Yes. That, he, that he doesn't say healing is for you today, but not tomorrow. Yeah. That your sins are forgiven today, but I don't know. I'll see how I'm feeling next week. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. First Thessalonians 2.13, I love this. It says, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually works also in you that believe. Boy, that says a lot there. Do you know that God has always, in the earth, he's always delivered his word through a man? And if we, uh, this is part of taking God at his word, Ephesians 4, and talking about how he gave gifts to the church and for the equipping of the saints, right? So when we're hearing the word, we're not hearing it according to just hearing mere man's word, but we're receiving it as it truly is, which is the word of God. And we've got to call it that. Amen. We've got to call it that, uh, or we're not going to come up under it, yeah. Right? Uh, and so we've said this many times also that don't take, don't take any words, body's word for it. Don't take my word for it. Don't take pastor's word for it. This is why, this is why, this is a why, kind of Italian there, huh? <laughs> this is why God's people uh, are anemic because they just take whatever they hear. They just take whatever they hear. You're not supposed to just take what you hear. Yes, the Lord will minister his anointing and his word to you through other people. But you don't sit on your butt and do nothing with it. You get the word out for yourself. Yep, I'm passionate about it. Yes, I am. 
How we respond to the word is the degree to which we will or will not walk in life and light and the promises of God. How we honor his word. How we honor. If his word is final authority in my life, then I am making every decision based on his word. If I'm not ever in his word, or if I'm just in his word one day a week, or maybe two days a week, you realize it's going to be difficult to come under the authority of his word if I'm not honoring it every single day. <clears throat> we know in the Bible that uh, Mary said to the, to the people uh, for the first miracle about the water pots, when, when she was, uh, Jesus' very first miracle of turning water into wine. And uh, she looked at the people and she said, whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you. I'm looking at you right now and I'm telling whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever you see in that word right there, you do it. You do it. And do you know what happened when they did it? Do you know what happened when they put action to what was said? When they put action to Jesus' words, his power met their action. But, but that wine did not show up in the pots until they acted on his word. And that's the same with us for anything in our lives. But for healing, we're waiting on God to do something. But the power of God meets us uh, when we act on his word. To Peter, he said, cast out to the deep and, and throw your net out. And, and Peter said, Lord, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word. You know, there's going to be experiences in life. There's just going to be experiences in our life that say something different when we get a word from the Lord. Yeah. And when I'm talking about getting a word from the Lord, uh, yes, by His Spirit. His Spirit will, will talk to us. Yes, He can use other people. Uh, right now, I'm talking about that Bible that you're all holding, that we're all holding. All right? And so, there's going to be things in our lives that... When he gives us a word, it doesn't make sense for us to do it. But this is when, this, and this is training. This is training, you guys. This is every day. This isn't a, uh, it's not a one-time thing. This is, this is how we live. Even though we may not understand it, even though it may not make sense in our experience, our past experience says otherwise, there has to come a time in our lives when we say, nevertheless, Lord, at your word. At your word, Lord. At your word, nevertheless. And yes, there's going to be bombardments of thoughts. Uh, and the enemy's going to come and remind you how it didn't work last time. How it's not going to work this time. And give you every reason why. And, and again, this is why I'm talking about honoring the word. And, and us making the quality decision that we're coming under his word. That it's going to be final authority in our lives. Nevertheless, Lord, at your word. And he went out and he threw the net out and it was a boat sinking load of fish, right? Yeah. But you know what? The fish didn't jump in that net until he put action to what Jesus told him to do. On the flip side of that, the Bible tells us that in his own hometown, Jesus there could do no mighty works. There was no honor. There was no honor for him, and there was no honor for his word. And if we choose to live our lives in that way, which I know we're not, you wouldn't be here on a Wednesday night if that was your choice. But those who make the choice to, to live that way as, as a, uh, a lack of honor or very little honor for his word, there in our lives... He, he can do no mighty work. I mean, his mercy and his kindness will go just as far as it can possibly go with our unbelief and our dishonor. Yeah. Amen. God wants you well. Say, God wants me well. God wants me well. Glory to God. He's provided many ways, many methods for us to release our faith and receive healing for our bodies because he loves us so much. 
And we talked about this a few weeks ago. And I want you to understand this, that all of the ways or all of the methods to receive healing require faith. Require faith. Everything, everything we receive from God requires faith. So if it requires faith, we need to know, uh, and we need to learn, and we need to learn how to be um, proficient in walking by faith and not by sight. Isn't that right? And that's one of the reasons that we come to church is so we can be taught and we can be fed and we can grow and change from, from, one, uh, from one place of glory to another. Amen. So, all of the ways and all of the methods, I'm, I'm going to go kind of through this very fast, requires faith. And I want to make this clear. Uh, I want to make this clear to you on what my part in the body of Christ is. And that is teaching the word. Okay? I'm not a, I'm not a healing evangelist. <laughs> I, I don't have a healing anointing. I am authorized by God to lay hands on the sick and them recover as a believer, just as you are. Authorized to lay hands on the sick and them recover. But my place, my place in the body of Christ is to teach the word, to teach God's people who we are in Christ Jesus, what we have in Christ Jesus, what we can do in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so through the teaching of the word, to be able to release simple faith to receive any and everything that we need. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Through the teaching of the word, we can hear the word because faith comes by and hearing by what God says. So in, the, in, in that way, uh, through, through, the, through the teaching of the word, that faith can come and I can release faith for everything that I need in my life. And the same is true for you. Amen. Acting, just the acting in simple faith on God's word. Amen. Does that make sense to you? <clears throat> so that's my approach in, in healing. To teach God's word so that you can receive healing by simple faith in his word. Now, uh, are, we going to pray, uh, are, are we going to pray? Yep, we're going to pray for people. I don't know if it will be tonight. But yes, we're going to lend our faith to go along with your faith. Amen. Uh, uh, absolutely, we are going to do that. But you know what? This is what I have learned. Uh, so many times people come up and they, st they stand in a prayer line and they leave uh, disappointed and upset in the very same way they came because they came and did not release a lick of faith. Y'all, that was weak. That was weak. So not only does the prayer need to be releasing faith, but the one receiving needs to be releasing faith. And so the more that we stay under the word and we stay under the word and we stay under the word, then we come to this place that we can release faith and receive. Amen. And so he's given us multiple ways whereby we can release faith for healing. I want to go through these very quickly. Praise God. Uh, and about his word, do you know that when you're reading God's word and it just seems that a scripture or a passage just jumps off the page at you? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> Participation here. Yeah, where it looks like God just took a highlighter and just went over words, right? So that is God breathing. That's the Holy Spirit breathing on that word to us. Uh, that's revelation knowledge coming. And when that happens, we're not just to sit there and say, oh, that's cool. We are to act on that word. We're to act on that word. Does that make sense? Amen. Uh, and, and usually the, the first line of acting is saying. Is saying. All right. <clears throat> When we act on that word, that is releasing faith in that word. Amen. So, re-entering some of the ways or the methods to receive 
healing. Number one, using the name of Jesus. We're going to go through these very quickly. Using the name of Jesus. We demand in the name of Jesus that the sickness and disease leave. Every sickness, disease must bow to the name of Jesus. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, the power of that name. Is cancer a name? Yes. Is depression a name? Yes. <clears throat> Is high blood pressure a name? Yes. Everything has a name. And this says that every knee bows to the name of Jesus. Do you know as a child of God, he's given you his name. You have the authority to use the name of Jesus. Now, you know what? We can, we can look at this and we can say, amen, that there's nothing above the name of Jesus. Every knee bows to the name of Jesus. But unless we take this and unless we put it in our mouth and in our heart and unless we use that name, it's not going to do us any good. Amen. <clears throat> the prayer of agreement. Two can join their faith together and receive from God. Ooh, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that other people can join our faith with us? Each one, each one must bring faith. And we don't come out of that agreement with the passing of time. Come on now. Oh, the passing of time. It has, it, it, it has um, derailed it, it, it has taken off course many, many, many of God's people, the passing of time. Just laid, laid it down and, and just gave up. <clears throat> we don't come out of that agreement with the passing of time. We are to stay in faith until the answer manifests. Say, until it manifests. You know, sometimes we've just got to make a decision. We have to make a decision that it's not okay. That it's just not okay. We have got, as God's people, just so many times just put up with, well, it's okay. I'll just put a band-aid on it and go on. It's just okay. I'll just deal with it or I'll just cope with it. And until we come to the place that we say it's not okay, it's not okay to do without what Jesus paid to give us, then we're going to continue to do without. Uh, I'm going to... I'll share this through, through the weeks to come, but a little over two years ago, uh, I, I started going through uh, a test, and it was a test concerning my body, and um, like I said, I'm just going to share uh, just, a, just a fragment here. <clears throat> but it hit me out of the blue in such a time that it just knocked me off my feet. Yes, do you know people of the word can be knocked off their feet? Aren't you grateful? I'm so grateful to be connected to the body. I'm so grateful to be connected that I continue to come and I continue to come and I continue to be strengthened by the word of God. Glory to God. And, and so... Uh, the, the first part of the test when it came, there was such an amount of fear that I just absolutely yielded myself to. And uh, that's a tough place to be. That's a tough place to be. When all we have to do is answer it. All we have to do is answer it and say, no, I will not fear. And answer it with the word of God. Uh, but at this particular time, I did, not, I did not do that. And so things just seemed to be increasing rapidly and, and just spinning out of control. And the warfare on my mind and the warfare in my body and the symptoms in my body. How many of you know that symptoms can scream at you? Woo, they can scream. How, how many of you know that when you're in pain, it can scream at you? And it can seem like you're anything but the healed of the Lord. Yeah, and so I remember this particular time when I was out walking on the porch, did that a lot during this time. And, uh, and yeah, so there were phases of this that took way longer than was necessary. Uh, 
but thankful for God's faithfulness. Amen. Thankful for his faithfulness. But um, there came a time, I, I, like I said, I was walking on the porch, and uh, I was just mad. And I wasn't mad at God. I knew this wasn't a God thing. I knew, I knew it was a me thing, you know, and some things that I had let on the inside of me. And I just remember saying, I refuse to do without the healing of my body that Jesus paid for. And, and that may not sound like much to you, but at that time, that was a big thing coming out of my mouth. And, and so, so just in doing that began to turn me, began to start uh, turning things. And so I said that to say this, we've got to not be all right. We, we have to decide we're not all right with doing without. We're, we're, we're not all right uh, with, with seeing our kids serving the devil. We've got to be not all right with doing out what Jesus paid for. We've got to not be all right with not having enough money to pay our bills when God's word says something entirely different. Quit trying to cope and just do life the best that you can and get God's word on the matter. Hallelujah. We, we're not all right. I'm not all right with doing out with doing without healing for my body when the Lord Jesus allowed himself to be beat so that I can be healed and whole. I'm not all right with it. <clears throat> so the prayer of agreement, Matthew 18, 19 says, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Glory to God. So we come into the prayer of agreement. Uh, two people each bring their faith. Uh, not their opinion. Faith comes by hearing God's word. We're bringing faith based on the word of God. And we come into agreement with the word and with each other. And we don't come out of that agreement until the answer manifests. Amen. Anointing with oil, James 5, 14 through 15 says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Uh, I want to say here regarding this scripture, uh, being in church for the number of years that I've been in the church, I'm just going to tell you that this scripture works best for people when they initiate it. Do you understand? Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. And so many times you get, we get phone calls, so-and-so's in the hospital, we need someone to go pray for them. Well, does that person want us to come pray for them? Do you understand? Your faith needs to be engaged. If we're going to call for the elders of the church, it's going to work best if we do the calling, right? Because we're exercising faith in God's word. We're, we see in God's word that if I'm sick, that I can call for the elders of the church. And, and, and they can anoint me with oil and lay hands on me. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. It matters what kind of prayer is prayed. <laughs> Amen. But the prayer of, uh, of faith will save the sick. And, uh, and so that's just like if we, if we read that verse and it's highlighted to us. Right? and the Lord is bringing revelation knowledge on that passage of Scripture right there, then what are we to do? We're to act on that word. We're to act on it. Amen. This is a quote from the Healer Divine book. It says, when someone is sick and needs the help of someone else's faith, they can call for a more mature Christian who believes in healing to anoint them with oil. It matters who you go to. If you're needing healing in your body, don't go to a Christian who doesn't believe that healing is for today. Don't frustrate your faith. Anoint them with oil, which represents the anointing, and pray. It's not the oil that heals. It's the prayer of faith that saves the sick. But when the oil is applied, that's the point of contact when the sick one uh, is to release their faith, believing they are healed, for God's healing power is now at work in them. Amen. Uh, another way is to receive healing through the laying on of hands, which we talked about, Mark 16 and 18. And every believer, every born-again believer is authorized to do this, to lay hands on the sick 
uh, and the Bible says, and they shall recover. Let's just, let's just look at that for a minute. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You know what? We don't step out and do this enough, mainly because uh, we're walking by sight and not by faith. God said, we'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If I'm going to come under this word, then I'm going to lay hands on the sick. They're going to recover, but I'm not going to stand there and wait for something to happen in their body. I'm not going to wait to see something before I believe that that word is true. Thank you, Lord. We can receive healing through, oh, I just said that, through the laying on of hands. Excerpt from the book and on, on this. Every believer should lay hands on the sick, expecting them to recover, whether they recover quickly or over time. Recover means that, that you begin to amend. Uh, for lack of a better term, that the, that the bleeding has stopped. We lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Uh, that means that the, the sickness, the disease, whatever it is, it stops right there. And from that point forward, they begin to recover and to get better and to amend. Amen. If someone lay, lays hands on you uh, for healing, that's the point of contact when you are to release your faith. The one who lays hands on you must release faith, but the one who is being prayed for must also release faith. Amen. When hands are laid on you in faith, healing always begins. When we obey the word in faith, healing always begins. Say it always begins. begins. Believe this. Keep believing that power is working in you until the manifestation is complete. Amen. And then we can receive healing through a gift of the Spirit. And again, the gift of the Spirit, which is uh, the nine gifts of the Spirit, the manifestations of the Spirit, are talked about in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. And this is as as the Spirit wills. No man uh, can decide when a gift of the Spirit or a manifestation of the Spirit is in operation. All right? A gift of of the Spirit, the sick one is healed instantly apart from any faith of their own. Oh boy, that sounds good. Does that sound good? I'm telling you, it sounded good to me over two years ago. The only thing I wanted was for it to stop. You know? But being this far down the road, the greatest thing, the greatest thing, the greatest thing uh, is for my faith uh, to have been established. And normally in the operation of the gifts of the Spirit, they are for the unsaved or someone that's untaught about faith or healing. So that is usually the time that the, that the gifts of the Spirit are in operation. That means God is wanting and, exper- and expecting you as a child of God to exercise your faith in His Word. And this is for healing and this is for everything that He has given us. Amen. All right, so um, this last uh, this last way that I'm that I'm going to mention is just knowing that healing belongs to you, knowing that healing belongs to you. Um, Matthew eight seventeen in the Amplified reads, and thus he fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He himself took in order to carry away our weaknesses and infirmities, and he bore away our diseases. Glory to God. Do you remember the message that we heard on redemption by Keith Moore? Uh, Yeah, and so knowing that healing belongs to you, how are we going to know as a child of God that healing belongs to us? How are we going to know? Because the Word tells us so. Is that right? Because the Word tells us so. And, and so that is, that, that's about the, the teaching of the word. So we hear the word. And then in simple faith, we just release our faith to receive. Amen. Can it be that simple? It really can. 
It really can be that simple. But you know what? Full faith doesn't come on one hearing. Full faith does not come on one hearing, on two hearing. That's why it's so important that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It's present. It's present. My hearing yesterday does not produce faith in me today. Faith is a living thing. His word is a living thing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by what God says. And if we start our day every single day by what God is saying, by looking in his word, by confessing his word, by fellowshipping with him in his word, then my faith, my, my switch of faith will constantly be flipped up. Amen. Uh, the switch of faith will be constantly on. That means the healing power is constantly flowing. Constantly flowing, constantly flowing. I'm never without it. I'm never without it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a quick, um, a quick review. I'm going to say these really fast, so just write the scriptures down. A review of God's will regarding healing. And these are, oh my goodness, it's 8.15. <clears throat> okay, well, well, all right. Uh, Luke 5, 12 through uh, 13, the leper came to Jesus and said, Lord, I know you can heal me if you are willing. And we know that Jesus said, I will. Come on, this is important. Jesus said, I will. Jesus is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. And Acts tells us that he's no respecter of persons. Jesus said, I will to the leper. Jesus says, I will to you. Amen. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 tells us that God's word is medicine for our flesh. God's, God's will regarding healing. He made his word to heal us. As a healing agent, if he did not want you well, he would not have provided for your healing. <clears throat> Isaiah 53 Healing was provided in redemption. Again, just referencing uh, Brother Keith's message, I, I encourage you to listen to it multiple times. And I'm going to say this. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again and again and again. And uh, Brother Joseph Morris, he, he made this comment, and he's been in the ministry for many, many, many years. Uh, he's one. He's just one minister that I have heard say this. But he says that every single day he listens to at least uh, two or three of Brother Hagen, Brother Kenneth e. Hagen, of, of his messages. Now, of these messages, and Brother Hagen's been in heaven since 2003, of these messages, uh, he, could, he could quote. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he could quote. He's heard them so many times. But what is he doing? He's hearing, and he's hearing, and he's hearing every single day so that his, uh, so that his faith is operative that day. So his faith is operative that day. We can never hear too much. We can never hear, I want my faith working. I want my faith working every single day. And for my faith to work and to be operative, I have to know and I have to hear what God is saying. Honor his word. Mona, honor his word. Mona, honor my word and my word will do the work. Excuse me. We talked about in Genesis <coughs> that there was no sickness and disease in God's original creation. Sickness and disease came from sin, right? Amen. Satan is the one who oppresses with sickness. Jesus healed all who came to him for healing. And we know, <clears throat> just bear with me, it'll straighten up in a minute. Jesus is the exact representation of the Father, right? Uh, <clears throat> and I heard this statement, and it's so true. If, um, if we have a thought pattern about God, that it, God the Father, that is inconsistent with what we saw in Jesus, uh, then we've got a wrong belief system. And, and, and we need to put it down. Amen. <clears throat> wow. Lord, where to go?
Well, I didn't even get to the crux of the message. We, we will next week, though. It's the word. Praise the Lord. I want to stop, though, um, and I want to read some testimonies, uh, talk about some testimonies of people uh, receiving uh, their healing. And uh, I, I had told this, I think I told it in staff and at our women's uh, prayer group as well. But Andrew Walmack told this story uh, about a woman who was at a convention of some, uh, of some sort. And she received her healing. And she came up and she gave testimony and praising God for, for the receiving of her healing. Now, this one is going to make uh, more sense probably next week when we talk about the healing of the nobleman's son. Uh, <clears throat> but she, she uh, did I tell you what she had? Big goiter. So, so she had a very large goiter. And she was prayed for and she believed that she received her healing. And she gave God praise and she thanked him for it. A year passed and, and it was the same sort of convention that they had every year. And, and she came up and she just praised God for her healing. She was thanking God for her, her healing. Uh, that she had received her healing. The goiter still there. The goiter still there. The third year came, same convention. <clears throat> she came up and she was giving God praise. She was so joyful and she was so happy. And she was genuinely thanking God for her healing. Give it, giving him praise. The goiter still there. It bothered some people. And so there were some people that went to the, the, whoever was holding this meeting. And, and they said, you've got to make her stop. This is just making us all feel super awkward that she just keeps thanking God and, and praising God for her healing. And, and, and so when obviously she's not healed, we can see it. She's not healed. And so uh, someone, um, I don't know who it was, but someone actually talked to her. <clears throat> she went back to her hotel room that night uh, and she said, Lord, she said, I know that you have healed me. I know that you have, and I have thanked you, and I've praised you for it. She said, but Father, these people won't believe unless they see something. So I'm asking you to take this goiter away. That night, it was completely gone. The next night at the convention, uh, once again, I mean, once again, she, she didn't change her tone. She knew she was healed of the Lord and she didn't need to see something to believe it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. How many times have we called ourselves unhealed because of what we've seen? We, we've released faith for healing. We, we've been standing on God's word. Uh, and yet we're making declarations about ourselves or about, or about other people that they're not healed based on what we see. We're called to walk by faith and not by sight. And that's what faith does. We, we believe, then we see. We believe and then we see. Is this right? Is this Bible faith? We believe and then we see. Hallelujah. And so I want to read this right here. <clears throat> this is uh, from Brother Keith's book, uh, God's Will to Heal. Look at this. Look at the treasure of this book. There are treasures everywhere uh, that feed us God's good word. This is one of them. It's on our website. It's on Brother Keith's website. It's free. You can download it for free. <clears throat> he was talking about a time when he was teaching uh, at healing school at Raymond. And he said, I was teaching in healing school several years ago, and it was a small group of about 15 people or so. Uh, we were fairly informal, and when I was teaching some things about healing, a lady looked up and said, excuse me. I said, yes. She asked, does that mean I just believe I receive my healing, and I just believe I take it, and I have it? I said, that's right. She said, that's all there is to it? I said, that's it. Jesus already did the hard part, didn't he? He bought it. He paid for it. He bore your infirmities. He carried your pains. She said, okay. 
I went on teaching. I wasn't waving my hands. I wasn't preaching real fast. There was no fast organ music. I was just teaching. At the end, she came up and said, look. I said, what? She said, the whole side of my body has been paralyzed. I haven't been able to use that hand. I couldn't pick up anything with it, she said. Look, look, as she opened and closed her fist. We shouted, we praised God. Nobody prayed a prayer for her. Nobody laid hands on her, but she got touched. What happened? She had asked, does that mean I just believe I take it right now and I have it? I told her that's, that's what it said. That's what the word said. And she said, okay. Some would say it can't be that simple. How did you get born again? How did you get born again? The exact same way. See, we're so accustomed. We're so accustomed to walking by sight and not by faith. <clears throat> and so we miss out <coughs> on these precious promises, these things that Jesus paid a very huge price for us to have. Is it really that simple that I just believe I receive it and I take it? Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I've, I've shared this one before, this testimony uh, of a woman who was, uh, they found something on an exam or, a, or something, uh, a, a lump in her breast. And the doctor said, I want to do an ultrasound on it. And she went to have the ultrasound done. And, and um, while, while he was doing the ultrasound on it, he turned the monitor towards her so that she could see it. And he said, you see this place right here. This is our place of concern. And, and she said, oh, God, within herself, she said, oh, God, if I just hadn't have seen it, it would have been so much easier what she was saying. It would be so much easier for me to believe for me to believe if I just hadn't seen something so contrary to the truth. And she heard within her spirit, the spirit of God say, is what you see greater than my word? She said, oh God, forgive me. No, nothing is greater than your word. And as she said that, she said, and she said, the doctor saw this. Now, it doesn't always happen this immediate, but this time it did. Uh, she said, the doctor saw it, the nurse, the technician saw it. Uh, when, when she said that, no, Lord, nothing is greater than your word. Nothing is greater than your word. And by your stripes, I was healed. And they, she saw a light that came across on the screen. And, and it started out like this, and then it just kept closing in and closing in and closing in on that mark that they were concerned about uh, until it just absolutely consumed that mark and it was gone. <laughs> Nothing is greater than your word. Nothing is greater than your word. I'm telling you, you don't need you don't need someone who flows in miracles. You don't need to be looking for the next Benny Hinn or the next Oral Roberts to come lay their hands on you. By simple faith in God's Word, you can be healed. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, I'm going to read a couple of more. And I'm not even going to ask you if you're all right with it. I guess you can choose to be or not to be, huh? I read this before, probably the first on our first one that we taught. Uh, and it, it, it says, meeting God's power. God's power will meet us when we act in faith. And we must act again and again until we see the manifestation of what we're believing for. Amen. Amen. If we believe that we receive, then we act like it. If we believe that we receive, then we act like it. We're not waiting to see something. Come on. We're not waiting to see something. We're taking God at his word and we're acting on it. What, what, what does that look like for you? 
What, what does it look like to act on, on his word? This was the testimony of a mother whose little boy was confined to a wheelchair. Doctor stated that he would never walk again. He would always be crippled. But every day that mother would take her son out of his wheelchair and gently pull him around the floor on his stomach for an hour, thanking God for having healed him. Don't let this slip by you. Okay? She did this faithfully for approximately one year. One day as she went to remove her son from his wheelchair, the boy jumped out and took off running. Why? Because his mother defied that which tried to bind. Faith is an act. It's a lifestyle of acting. If, if I believed that, that, <clears throat> that someone... Um, I don't know, if, if, if I believe that someone paid my house off, then I am not going to, to, uh, to wait or to save my thanks uh, until I see the title in my hand. I'm going to go ahead and say some thanks. Is that right? And on top of that, I sure as stinking sure am going to quit sending the payment in. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Stand with me. Glory to God. So we're going to talk about acting, uh, acting on God's word and, and not what we see next week. But the honor, the honor uh, of God's word. I want to read this as we close. And I'll tell you this. I know it's 830, and I'm going to read this, and we will, um, we will dismiss. But I will tell you, if you're needing healing in your body, and, uh, and if you are in a place and ready to release your faith, I'm so more than happy. Pastor Evan is so more than happy, Landon, to agree with you, to lay our hands on you, and we'll release our faith, and you'll release your faith. Amen. And, uh, and so I would invite you to come up afterwards, all right? <clears throat> but I want to encourage you. I don't want to discourage you from coming, but I want to encourage you to be ready to release your faith. Amen. Um, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this right here, and then we're going to close. <clears throat> This is in the book, The Healer Divine, and I believe we have more. Uh, Julie, do we have any more out there at the Connection Center? Are we out? Say it again. One, we have one. We can get more if, any, if anybody wants uh, more. But she said, one Sunday as I got up to preach, words came out of my mouth before I realized what I was saying. I heard myself saying, let the power fall, let the power fall. This puzzled me when I said it, and I questioned the Lord inwardly. Why am I saying, let the power fall? I know it's already present. I know the power of God is already present. Then the Lord gave me the illustration, the following illustration, and talking about a pinata at a child's birthday party. You know, that the pinata is there, that it is present, but the goodies aren't going to fall out until what? Until what? I, I, until what? Yeah, yeah, until we hit it. Until, until it, it gets hit with something that's going to bust it open. Is that right? It's in the room and it's present. All right? Although the pinata is full of candy, no one receives it until the pinata is struck just right. When it's hit just right, it's going to open up and the candy go everywhere. The power of God is like that pinata. Although the power of God is present everywhere, it's not always in manifestation. It's not always flowing. Faith is the stick that strikes the power of God, causing it to flow. Speaking words of faith and acting in faith is what strikes the power, bringing it into manifestation. Amen. And we're going to talk more. We're going to talk more about Jesus, the high, uh, the high priest of our profession and confession. We're, we're going to talk about faith and the operation of faith. It's not enough for the power to be present. It must be flowing before anyone will benefit from it. So the power of God is present here. 
It's present. The power of God is present to do a work in your life. Amen. Amen. But it's going to stay uh, locked up until someone strikes it with faith. For your faith to strike the power of God and cause it to flow into your body, say this. I believe in the power of God that's present. I believe that it flows through my body. Driving out sickness, disease, pain and symptoms. And it's working healing now. Then continue to praise and worship God, holding your attention on Him and on His Word and off of your body. As you continue to praise God, that power does its divine work. We don't have to work it. We don't have to make it happen. God's Word does the work. God's power does the work. And the more I praise Him and the more I thank Him, I walk myself right into full manifestation because, because worshiping in Him and thanking Him is the releasing of our faith. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We, we, we don't have the power. It's His power. You don't have to produce it. The Word will do the work. If your attention stays on him and on his word and off of your body. As you continue to praise God, that power does its divine work. That's how you release faith in the power of God. Not only is God's power present everywhere, but if you are born again, God's power is in you. Because God's in you. Words of faith and actions of faith will cause that power to flow. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for your healing word. We thank you that you sent your word and you healed us. We thank you, Father, that you sent Jesus. And, and, and to this day in the court of heaven, the stripes upon his back witnesses and declares that we are healed. For it is written by his stripes we were healed and so father we thank you for it we lay hold of it we lay hold of it by faith and we just we receive it and we take it now hallelujah and we keep our mind set on your life-giving word we keep our eyes set on jesus our healer <clears throat> we don't mind our body we don't give our attention to what we see in the natural realm. And we thank you, Father, that your word and your truth swallows up everything uh, that is a lie. It swallows up everything that is not of you. Ha <laughs> ha! Glory to God. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your healing word. We, we thank you for your healing word. And we believe that it is working mightily in our bodies. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. We magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you. We magnify you. I can't say this enough. I know it's 837 and I'm closing. I cannot say this enough. The position of our heart regarding thanksgiving and regarding giving him thanks. Worshiping him and praising him. We can worship and praise ourselves right in to the fullness of every promise that he's given us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Did you receive anything tonight? Amen. All right. Well, we love you, and Landon has an announcement.